All right, so a question for you. How far back can you extend your big toe? You should be able to get pretty darn close to 90 degrees. 89 degrees is what we want, okay? Now, that's passively, so we know that's great that I can do that passively. I can hit like a nice 90, almost 90 degree angle here, but like what can I do actively? Let's try putting the big toe on the ground and see what happens. Okay, again, not quite 80 to 90. I'll take it, it's a great start, but my goal is gonna be to continue to improve my active control of shortening these tissues. And I want you to watch my arch of my foot as I lift that up. Can you see how the muscles flex harder and harder? I'm trying to pull my, my toenail back towards the top of my foot. And this is your next drill. See passively how far you can go and then work to like start improving that. If you feel pain here when you do that, stop and talk to a chiropractor or physio who knows how to work with feet and ankles. There may be some stuff in the joint capsule that needs to be cleared first. So first, checking passively, what, what do you got? And then starting to actively pull into it, what do you got? That is a great first start for bringing the quality of the toe back into uh, happiness and good function. And even if your toe is already pointing really far off to the side, just use your hand to kind of guide it into a more straight position as you do that drill and start to teach your body how to respond to that stimulus that you're giving it, okay? So bunions, flat feet, not a normal part of aging by any means and also not something you are genetically predisposed to have. Um, also too, the big toe is so important that when somebody has to have their big toe amputated for any reason, it's actually a really big concern and a really big deal for how is this person going to balance? Because when you take away the big toe, you don't balance as well. And when you don't balance as well, um, remember that old phrase, well it's not an old phrase, it's old in the fitness world, um, you can't fire a cannon from a canoe. So imagine a canoe now, and let's put a cannon in it, and then let's fire it. Like, what's gonna happen to the canoe, right? It'll blow away, it'll be crazy, and won't work. That doesn't work. That's why you put cannons on like big giant ships. Well, I don't know if they still do, they don't. But in the old times, they did. Um, so the cannon needs to be on a stable surface. So anyways, to generate power, you have to have a stable surface. If you aren't stable because you don't have a big toe functioning well, or God forbid you've actually had to have it removed, you're gonna have a really hard time creating stability, which means you have a really hard time creating power. Does that make sense? In order to generate power from your lower body, whether it's in gait or jumping or anything, anything where you're gonna need to create some sort of control or movement from your lower body, you have to have your feet stable and in control with the ground so that your brain and your pelvis can talk to each other and go, yep, we're stable, generate a huge amount of power, okay? So big toe has to function really well, super critical to balancing. So the next time you're in yoga class or doing anything where you're balancing on one leg, notice what your big toe and your little toes are doing. My guess is, especially if you're an adult, your big toe is gonna to be lifting up in the air every other second or so, because it literally doesn't know how to actually stay pressed into the ground and grounded with the rest of your body. So that's your first job. Start grounding the big toe back into the ground. Whether you're in shoes or not, just start to notice it. Then notice your little toes. Are they curling like this into the floor? They might be, and that's what we start to call those hammer toes when they stay stuck that way. If you're curling into the floor, you're again missing the musculature of the feet to really help you to their greatest capacity. What you wanna have is everything into the ground this way and grounding downward, straight down into the floor so that the whole toe can make contact with the floor. So start noticing that. Next time you're in yoga or you're doing anything on one leg, what are your toes doing? And if you notice little kids, they have an innate like ability to ground the big toe into the ground. But we lose that as we stop practicing it, we have to wear shoes, and we start losing the connection to our feet that we had when we were little running around barefoot. The good news is you can restore that over time, but it does take time. Now you might be thinking, well how fast can I start seeing changes in my feet? Um, here's the reality, when I was changing my foot, so I had a collapsed right arch, it wasn't fully collapsed, but it was flat compared to the other one. It took a year, to actually grow pretty like rad looking arch. So get in it for the long game is it what I guess I have to say here. And really, where are you going that you would want your results now and it will be a terrible thing if you don't get them now? Like you have a lifetime to do this, whatever your lifetime is, you have that to get this done. It's not the end of the world if it only changes a micro millimeter in a month. That's an improvement, that's a change, that's progress forward. And you getting frustrated about that only impedes your progress. So plan for the long game. I actually had a girl, same thing, girl, high arches. We, and we started bringing her like rest of her foot back into function so she could actually function well with the high arches, a year. It was a year. But really, she went from 
okay, I can't really do endurance stuff because it hurts to Ironman triathlon a year later. Like, cool, great, let's get on the journey and let's go on it together, right? So plan on taking some time here. Um, all right, plantar fascia pain. That's the last thing I want to say. Then we're going to get to questions because I know we had a um, talk about questions and answers we want to do today. And then we still have a joke. Duh. Um, okay. Plantar fascia acts like a tie rod. It connects the calcaneus or the heel to the toes and helps the whole thing stay connected together. However, it's not, its job is not to do all of the work for your foot. But could you see how if your intrinsic muscles of your feet, your arches, your extrinsic muscles of your feet, if they're not functioning well, who's left? The connective tissue, which is what plantar fascia is. So your connective tissue then goes, well, I mean, all right, we'll take this load on for you and we'll handle more of the gait and landing mechanics and push off mechanics that, you know, everybody else is supposed to be doing, but they're freeloaders and they're not. Uh, we'll do it. Fine. No problem. But tissue can only take itself so far before it goes, hey, this doesn't feel so good anymore. You're using me a lot and I don't like it. And that is where a lot of the overuse injuries and inflammatory injuries with the plantar fascia can develop. So if you're developing plantar fasciitis, there's a reason for it. And you need to start addressing the muscles and bones in your foot and your ankle to function better so that your plantar fascia isn't like relegated to doing all of the work of your foot. And of course, self-massage is only a first start, right? Like that's great that you've changed the pliability of your tissue in some way, but then what next? Your nervous system has to know how to control the new expanded range of motion of like your uh, bones in your, like the joints of the big toe and all the little toes. And then you have to build strength into it. So teaching your foot how to actually, like I was showing earlier, get into a really significant range and then actually be able to load the tissue without injury. So the plantar fascia really just takes the brunt of whatever isn't already working in your foot. So while it is great to massage that area, make sure you're spending the time on the actual root cause of the issue, which is likely either the joints not moving well, like big toe and the other toe joints, or your tissue not working well, or probably both because they are always interconnected and in harmony with each other. Okay, good. All right.